Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Gabrielle Trainer, and it's a great honour for me to be here as facilitator and MC tonight. Uh, I'd like to, of course, acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, the Gadigal people of the Aora Nation. And uh, I'd, of course, like to acknowledge uh, Jamie Parker, MP, who I think is here, uh, Alex Greenwich, MP, as well, and, of course, Mayor Rochelle um, Porteous, who's here from Leichhardt Council. Thank you, Rochelle, for joining us. Uh, there are a number of other councillors, probably too many to mention, but welcome all distinguished guests to this Bayes Precinct to Sydney, Sydney Ciders Summit. Uh, this is uh, uh, a part of a program of ongoing community and engagement events and a program that's been going on for quite some time. Uh, this weekend uh, there will be sessions with community groups. There'll be, there was a session this afternoon with, um, with leaders from the local schools and there's a whole program uh, over the weekend of uh, talks, uh, opportunities for people to comment, uh, have their views heard, give feedback to the publication particularly of a document uh, called Transforming City Living, which is a discussion paper that has been produced about the Bayes Precinct. There's also another parallel uh, call for great ideas uh, that you'll hear about tonight which also gives people the opportunity to contribute to this really important discussion about the future of the Bayes Precinct and the future of what is going to be an extraordinary part of Sydney and indeed something of national significance. So uh, you, you've all been asked here tonight, of course, because you're experts on the Bayes Precinct. Some of you have probably been consulted about this probably more than you would like uh, over the years. But uh, you're, you're all people of great passion, great knowledge and great commitment and we're really delighted to have you here uh, to contribute to tonight's discussion. So with that, uh, I'd also like to welcome, of course, the people who are participating in this discussion over the um, live stream that uh, is on the Urban Growth New South Wales website. And I think there's a, there'll, there'll be a bit of activity in the Twitter sphere that we'll, um, we'll talk about a bit later on as well. So uh, without further ado, I, I suppose just to set the scene, we have uh, a fly-through of the Bayes Precinct. Most of you don't really need to, uh, to see uh, uh, much more visual information about the Bayes Precinct because you know it so well. But just to set the scene, uh, we'll start with a short, uh, a short video production. So thank you. It's hard to believe that just two kilometres from Sydney's CBD, the Opera House and the Harbour Bridge, there are 80 hectares of prime waterfront land sitting largely underutilised and in some places derelict, together with 94 hectares of waterways. Urban Growth New South Wales plans to change that, to transform this government-owned land by unlocking the waterfront and creating great destinations and great opportunities on the land and the water that will benefit not just local residents, but the broader city of Sydney, the state and the nation. 30,000 years ago, the Cadigal and Wongal clans of the Aora Nation lived around the area. After European settlement, the area became home to a range of different industrial and maritime uses, including abattoirs and timber mills, rowing clubs, a container wharf, grain silos, and since 2013, the city's international passenger terminal at White Bay. At the head of White Bay sits the heritage-listed White Bay Power Station, which was built by New South Wales Rail Commissioners between 1912 and 1917 to provide power for Sydney's growing rail network. The power station was decommissioned in 1983 and since then has sat abandoned and inaccessible behind locked gates. The transformation project is about making the site accessible and finding a new life for the power station that generates new jobs and opportunities, whether as a place for learning, for arts and culture, or for high-tech innovation and advanced manufacturing, or a raft of other possibilities. But there's more to White Bay than the power station. Named after John White, the naval surgeon aboard the First Fleet, it's been a container wharf, and the Glebe Island grain silos bear testimony to its history as a dry bulk cargo terminal. The transformation of the area is all about maximising the public good by unlocking waterfront land which has been inaccessible for years. 
efficient and comprehensive transport and mobility in the area is also a priority, including dealing with the congestion on Victoria Road, which saps billions of dollars of productivity from Sydney and the nation. Adjacent to the old Roselle Rail Yards lies Roselle Bay. It has the potential to be a maritime playground of Sydney Harbour. We want to plan for the land and the water as a whole. But while the green space of Bicentennial Park sits to the south of the bay, today degraded land sits at the head of the bay, and the northern foreshore, a home to various maritime facilities, including a super yacht marina and a large dry stack storage facility, is effectively inaccessible to the general public. Then there's the Sydney Fish Market, the third largest fish market in the world, on prime waterfront land, less than a 20 minute walk from the heart of the CBD, but crying out for a complete overhaul. Imagine the possibilities if we redeveloped the 1960s market and enabled public access to the waterfront. What about a fresh market district, offering not just fish, but all sorts of fresh produce? We have a set of 20 principles, including public benefit and access, which are guiding our preliminary work on the 30-year transformation plan for the area. But we don't have all the answers. What we do know is that the transformation of the Bays Precinct represents one of the most exciting and ambitious city building opportunities in the world today, and that its success will hinge on mutual trust, goodwill and collaboration. When you leave this space, you can learn about the journey so far, read about some similar international projects and the fascinating history of the area. Then it's your opportunity to explore the different destinations of the Bay's precinct, hear ideas and most importantly, give your feedback. There are many ways to have your say. Please take part in the activities. Talk to people, ask questions. You can even record your feedback in the video booth. Throughout the event, if you have any questions about anything, ask one of the Urban Growth New South Wales Ambassadors. They're easy to spot, wearing orange lanyards and orange caps. In the unlikely event of an emergency, please follow instructions from venue security. Emergency exits are clearly labelled. You can also exit via the main entrance, the glass doors to the toilets and at the far end of the hall. The emergency assembly areas are in the car park in front of the entrance and on the oval near the Alexandria Hotel. So let's get going. Remember today is all about having your say and making sure the Bay's precinct transformation is something we can take pride in as individuals, as Sydney siders and as a city. So we'll be spending about the next hour and a half uh, hearing about the discussion paper and the elements of that and having uh, plenty of opportunity for question and answer. And following that, we'll have a session called Open Mic. Uh, I think we've had 10 people enrol for that, uh, where people will have, we were going to, it was going to be five minutes, but we might, because we've had so much interest, make it a little bit shorter, perhaps three or four minutes. Uh, people will have the opportunity to, to talk for that amount of time and respond to questions. Uh, we may break for um, for something to eat in the in the meantime, de depending uh, depending how everyone's feeling. So we'll take uh, we'll take a, a sounding from the uh, from the audience as to whether they're very hungry before the open mic session, or whether the, you can have something to eat uh, at the conclusion of that. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce the chief executive of Urban Growth New South Wales, David Pitchford, and uh, and David will begin to uh, tell you what's in store tonight. And, uh, and then uh, go into some of the detail about the, the elements of the discussion paper. David. Thank you, Gabrielle. And good evening and welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming out on Friday night. You're the third group of people to whom we've ex exposed our thinking in terms of the, uh, the discussion paper and what it contains and therefore our ideas and propositions on what might be best for the precinct so that we can discuss that and, and you can uh, give us your views on it. The first group was last night with Mayor Porteous and the Lord Mayor and councillors from your city uh, and from the City of Sydney. 
we had a, a session, a, a great interchange in that session, lots of questions and answers. And uh, I, I was very pleased with the outcomes there in terms of understandings. Obviously, there are questions and differences, uh, and we won't agree on everything, but I think it's fair to say, uh, Mayor, that we didn't disagree on everything. Um, the, uh, this afternoon, we had a wonderful involvement with what's called the Schools Leadership Forum, where we had kids from schools around the, the district come in to uh, be exposed to the plan and, and what's in it, and for us to then hear from them about what their ideas were. It was a fabulous exchange. We had kids who were five and six, right through to kids who were uh, 14 and 16, and some of the ideas were breathtaking. It was a great exchange, and, and it looks like that out of that uh, interaction, there will be a, uh, a schools-driven ambassador program. Uh, and just to share with you, the, they thought the presentations were interesting and good, but they, Simon and I gave, Simon Paget and I gave the presentations, uh, but they made it known to through one of their teachers that they said, si Simon and David are really old, so but we'd, we'd like to talk to someone who's young. So we've taken note of that. So as I say, thank you for coming along tonight. And uh, what I'm about to do is explain what I would like to discuss, or we would like to discuss with you, the presentation of the, of the discussion paper called Transforming City Living. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about a call for great ideas, a parallel process to the uh, feedback process we're offering in respect of the uh, discussion document, and then uh, explore and give feedback. And, and Gabrielle has already explained how that might go, and uh, as you say. Oh, evening, Jamie. Nice to see you. Thank you. Um, just you all know these areas, but one of the reasons I just want to run through them briefly is because of the diversity that this whole precinct offers, and therefore the diversity of possibilities that might exist for what happens here. And hopefully, we can agree uh, down the track on a proposition for what we actually do. But there are different things the fish market. Uh, you heard what the, the view expressed in the video. This is a, a piece of infrastructure that's made a massive difference to Bicentennial Park. This one shows, and I see we've got Joe James from um, Ports here. Welcome, Joe. Uh, this shows the importance of the, the history and uh, capacity of the maritime elements of the port uh, and uh, the district. And this, of course, goes to the fabulous industrial history of um, the base precinct. And this, of course, is Roselle Rail Yards, which uh, fed and serviced the, uh, the uh, White Bay Power Station. And there's a wonderful photograph when you go around later where you'll see just what a railway complex there was in front of the, of the, uh, of the power station. Some of you will remember that, but it's before I turned up in Sydney. I'd like to move to what the ambition for the Bayes project is. The government has charged us with looking beyond um, just a renewal process. So we're not about um, refreshing buildings and, and, little, uh, and just about spatial treatments. What we're looking to do is to come up with a transformation through the development of great destinations. And you'll see we're proposing that there are seven destinations that become part of the Bayes and that together the whole precinct is a, a transformational tool for the Western Harbour but also for the whole Sid of Sydney and therefore because of the importance of Sydney and its economical um, activity to, for the whole nation. And so that's very much why the, this, this um, summit over the weekend is called the Sydney Cider Summit because we want to hear from people across the city and we've got people from all over the place coming tomorrow and Sunday. So the question in some people's minds might be, why transform it? Uh, and we'd like to put this following case for that. Firstly, um, some of you might know that I used to be the head of the City of Melbourne, um, and uh, I know a bit about competitiveness of cities and how you go about it. And pretty much in this world today, there are two sorts of, uh, of cities. Those that choose to be competitive global cities and those who, choose, that, those who choose not to be. The state government, uh, therefore our corporation, uh, is part of very much the global com uh, competitiveness. 
The, the Baird government's view on this is they want to generate a world-class outcome and make certain that Sydney remains globally relevant and the Bay's transformation is part of that process. It's also the proximity and scale. Those of you, I'm not even going to go too much into this because you, you know all of this, but just in terms of the size of this operation and, and the importance of it, uh, we've heard a whole range of uh, comparisons and there are some projects over on the international wall that you'll get to later which set this out. But it's four times the size of Barangaroo, 80 hectares of land and 94 hectares of water. And so that's the scale of the, and scope of the thing we're looking at. And uh, unlike in a lot of these projects across the world, they suffer from fragmented land ownership. Uh, the majority of these lands are held and owned by the government. So it provides an opportunity for us all to come together to form a plan that that government land is used and, and managed appropriately. It's also a fundamental part of the Sydney Harbour foreshore. However, the foreshore and the waterways are not as well managed as the other parts of the harbour. And what we want to do, as those of you who were here at the International Summit last year, discovered clearly that the, the, the obligation we have is to give Sydney Harbour and the foreshore back to the people of Sydney and Australia so that we can come up with a, a whole different activity capability. That will take time and it'll take a lot of coordination, but that's our uh, ambition. Of course, we want to be absolutely certain that what we do here uh, uh, makes, uh, uh, makes the existing uh, very valuable activities and enterprises um, pr provide them with actually an uplift and a, ca a capability improvement. We'll see the, the fish market here. I'll have a little, a little bit more to say here. <clears throat> One of the things though we want to celebrate in our plan and in the final um, thrust of, of what we agreed to do is to pr protect the authenticity of this area not fill it with uh, brand new shiny things, but to, in, in essence, renew, refresh and transform it, but in ways that uh, maintains the authenticity. It's really important to our proposition. The culture and history. This is uh, the Heritage Fleet, um, well, one of the members of the Heritage Fleet, Fleet crew, and it's a fantastic example of the working harbour, working port, and the, the importance of the culture. We want to preserve that. Um, the market attractiveness, uh, there are elements of this that could be looked at for commercial treatment and the market attractiveness of that uh, would be very significant. And an important part of this is it is consistent with the overall platform of government policy. You'll see uh, if, you, if you read the Metropolitan Strategy, which is called a plan for growing Sydney, you'll see that there are about 104 obligations on uh, urban growth New South Wales to deliver within that strategy and as a, a critical part of that strategy is to deliver the transformation of the base. This, but it's also in compliance with other elements of policy, particularly um, in uh, transport and I'll come back to that in a moment. We've had lots of pieces of information fed to us and lots of uh, comments made and this is a summary of some of them. Uh, these are the ones that, are, uh, that have been repeated more and more. There, obviously there are more and there are others and there'll be ones that you have uh, in your mind to talk about tonight as well. But this list of things is uh, at the back of, of the, the planning for the discovery document and we hope that it will enable us to address them when we address the uh, document itself. The objectives of the precinct. Uh, and I'm not going to read this out, but knowledge intensive jobs is very important. I mentioned the, the transformation of the bays is to drive the economic growth of um, Sydney, New South Wales and the nation in order to make us globally competitive and relevant. And so therefore we want to bring and attract operations and, and industries to this area that would bring different new and exciting jobs and to attract talent. What we do not want to do is to see what's gone on elsewhere in parts of Sydney where uh, people are decanted from one part of the, of the city to another. They come, say, from Macquarie Street to other parts of the city uh, and so they're decanted there. That's the same jobs and the same people 
And so what we want to do is to develop new jobs and bring new people. Now, that, that, what we hope to do, though, is to build a very vibrant platform and a, a new element of the city to do that. Enduring socially, in, sorry, yeah, socially inclusive is obvious. We're going to be a strongly and <laughs> we're going to be as strongly approaching that as we can. And our commitment is to, is to build great places and great spaces, and we'll have more to say about this later. But what we do here, and we'll get to this in relation to design as well, whatever we agree to do, and we actually do, the design elements and the great, uh, the great side of it is going to be very important. We are not going to settle for mediocre outcomes here, and we, we give you that undertaking from the outset. Housing choices. Within this space, there will be places where housing is appropriate. But we want to, uh, to present a diverse um, offering of housing, including affordable housing options. The model that we're working on is called diversity in housing, and we're looking at different designs for different places. And in terms of density, we, the, the model that we will use will have elements of low density, medium density, and perhaps high density. But that model is for broadly right across the uh, urban growth portfolio. And in some of the projects, there will be more. Uh, it'll be more appropriate to have high density, and in some of the projects, it'll be less appropriate to have high density. And so we will look to uh, to a design um, franchise where we actually design places that fit well, and not try to force this issue. What's absolutely apparent to anybody who lives there or visits there is that we need, as a group, we need, and as a government to deliver, deliver a world-class mass and active transit system. We have already got uh, agreement from the government in relation to this, and we have already started with Transport for New South Wales the, on the, the development of the base precinct transport and mobility plan. And I'll say a little bit more about that in a moment as well. I mentioned a little bit about design. Um, those of you who heard at the uh, summit last year would have realised that we have a different methodology for approaching such projects. We're starting with thinking about what the city and the area should be before we go to funding and then only, whilst we pass, only when we get past the funding element of it do we think about the design and the building element. But whatever we do will be um, excellence and uh, will uh, exude ex excellence. We will form a design commission which will be co-chaired by the government architect, Peter Poulet, and a board member of Urban Growth, um, Ken Ma, who's also a very eminent um, architect as well. So what we're recommending is seven destinations. And these are the four that we recommend for inclusion in what we call the first time frame. There are th three time frames that we propose. The first one uh, it, it, uh, covers these projects and it's within, uh, uh, sees a commencement uh, in 2015 to 2019. So the first one is the Bayes Waterfront Promenade and there'll be more discussion when Simon uh, addresses us about what it means and what it looks like. But we, we're committed to, over the life of this project, the delivery of the Bayes, uh, sorry, the Bayes Promenade as part of the Sydney Promenade so that in the eventuality you'll be able to walk and cycle and, and recreate from Balmain to, um, to the CBD. Now we did uh, Discovery Day some time ago, only a month in fact, seems a lot longer, um, and uh, we were able to, with our partners' agencies, open this up to people so they could traverse the area I've just described. And so our long-term aim with all of those partner agencies is to deliver that permanently. But the first part of it will be um, from uh, Piermont to the fish market in the area in there. And uh, Simon will explain that more. The second uh, proposition we have is to rejuvenate the fish market, both the wholesale and the retail, in roughly the same area that it is now, but to go way beyond that and to create the Bayes Market District. And this is all about uh, presenting a much wider offering um, for Sydney and put the people who visit this area. The, the market is the third biggest in the world or the second, um, second number of visits 
uh, and so the, it's very significant as it is. But the but the the fish market has an aspiration to double its visitation from two million to four million, and to do that we need to uh, provide much more of an offering. Excuse me, but also it's all part of the the commercial aspect of, of uh, what can be done here and done in a, mass, a, a fantastic way. When you get to the international wall again, you'll see the market in Barcelona. For those of you who have been lucky enough to go there, it's a fantastic uh, proposition. The third one is to unlock the potential of the White Bay Power Station and its surrounds, uh, recognising its history and authenticity, but also to look at a world-class development there that can energise that building and also create a great um, outcome for Sydney and for all of us. And the third one is, um, and this is in direct partnership with um, the Port Authority of New South Wales, uh, which is one of our principal partners, we are going to co uh, cooperate to see how we can once and for all sort the issues at White Bay Cruise Terminal in terms of the environmental and ship to shore power aspects. And uh, the, we've already started talking to the bays about this. They're well advanced in relation to elements of it. And we're going to join together to actually come to that proposition. I mentioned the importance of transport and importance of transport and mobility. To us, we see this as a vast, a vastly important component of this. So much so within our corporation, we are going to build a dedicated team that will drive the development of the plan and then drive the implementation of that plan. So, and the, we're looking here, you can see some of the photographs, but we want it to be an active um, transport and mo mobility option with lots of options for how you get to different places by different ways. And those include some uh, interesting ones. Ferries are, are a, a great idea. We've had lots of people saying we think we should bring the ferries in and it seems a really interesting and uh, productive way to go about it. But there are other ways to, to look about this as well, but we want to actually make certain that the walking element of this is primary and uh, you'll hear some, uh, much, much more about this. So why destinations? These are the immediate ones I've just been through. The, these destinations, we believe, will enable us to create new and exciting spaces and a whole diverse um, offering of things in the bays. We certainly do not want to see a single developer or a single development rolled out across the bays. We're looking for diversity of design, diversity of just about everything, to be honest. Whatever we decide to do, build, create, we want it to be diverse and a great offering. So in the, the more medium term, we've got Roselle Bay and Waterways, and this is the area that uh, you saw on the video. We believe that uh, we can convert that into um, a, a place that can, that can coexist with some of the maritime industries that uh, currently operate out of there, but that we can make it so much more attractive and accessible to people to use and enjoy. And in the, the final uh, longer term period from works commencing 2022, Roselle Rail Yards uh, works will commence uh, at around that time. Um, the, this area of land, which again you know, uh, is the subject of the West, Commence, West Connects Delivery Authority uh, roadway um, planning. Uh, and it also is subject to uh, the uh, dealings over the, the location of the stabling yards for the, the light rail project. What that means is, uh, because that's not all sorted yet, but we're working with those organisations to try and make certain it gets sorted appropriately, but it won't be part of our initial operating uh, zone because it will need to be uh, uh, determined, defined, but we are still planning to come up with a, a, a novel solution to make that work. The Glebe Island, uh, Glebe Island is, the, uh, is Sydney's strategic deep water port and the government has preserved that, uh, that role and so it will, remain, it will remain that. Now I'll introduce you to Simon Pageant, who's the head of Urban Transformation. Simon will give you more detail in relation to any of these and I haven't seen anybody 
put their hand up yet, but uh, we'll be open to answering any questions about all of this um, as soon as you're ready. So, Simon. Thanks, David. So just before I start to talk about the details of the specific destinations, I just wanted to reinforce one of the points that David mentioned about the transport and mobility plan. It was a really good point that was raised by the councillors last night. Right? We need to have a properly completed transport and mobility plan that will then inform and drive land uses. So what we don't want to do is come up with solutions and then back solve for transport solutions. Uh, what we're actually doing is coming up with the transport mobility plan and then that will lead us to what the land uses are for the various destinations that we're actually talking about. So what I'm going to give you a bit of an overview of are the possibilities that we've thought about and talked about as a group. The very first possibility is exactly what David was talking about earlier, which is the potential to actually connect Piermont right, through a... I've got the, the uh, control. So Piermont through a promenade all the way through the existing uh, promenade through there that's already been completed, recently extended by the city, right, through uh, Glebe Island and then to our Balmain Peninsula. Now all these areas, as we're all aware, are subject to current uses, current leases. So the plan is a long-term plan. This is a 20 to 30 year project. So our time frame for the implementation of that promenade may not take 20 to 30 years, but certainly we've got to deal with a lot of the land uses on the journey. And as we all are aware, these this is the nine birds that are identified as Sydney's deep water birds to the west of the Harbour Bridge. So they're going to remain in place and they actually have uses in place at this point in time. And as a person who was responsible for the Discovery Day organisation, the logistics of getting everyone organised just to have an event to be able to give people the level of exposure to the waterfront, very, very difficult. So what we focused our attention on was what could we do and where do we have some degree of control? So the government owns a parcel of land there. Right? There's some private land holdings there. We've got the Sydney fish markets there. And then we've got Bridge Street and the two wharves that are sitting at the end of uh, Wentworth Park there. So we feel as though right, we have most control in that area. And that's the reason why we've selected that as the first immediate project or immediate priority. Right. The development of that um, promenade will be a combination of temporary works initially and then more permanent works as they come on board with regard to any adjacent development that I'll talk about in a few minutes. Okay. So we talk about the promenade. Right. Um, it's just a live example. So I don't know whether anyone's actually tried to make the connection between uh, Wentworth Park through to uh, Piermont, but it's a very torturous route and you're in underneath all the freeways. It's not pleasant. So even if the first step that we actually do there is just make that experience a far more pleasant experience, that's an immediate win. And then after that is how do we then align the more permanent solution with the adjacency of works that we'd be undertaking. Okay. So again, you know, talking about water usage, how do we activate that? One of the areas that we're actually talking about uh, going past is the dragon boat uh, area. So, you know, how do we get better access to the waterfront right, for a lot of the other water sports? So maybe there's some real opportunities there and one of the things we've canvassed is maybe there's the opportunity for us to be able to buy some floating um, promenades. And then what can happen is we can use those floating promenades and continue to reuse them over the next 20 to 30 years as we get more and more of the areas available. So if we talk about then destination number two. Destination number two uh, is the Bays Market District. 
So the core element of the Bay's market district is the Sydney fish markets. And as in the video, right, the facility that we're all looking at was not a purpose designed facility for retail and wholesale activities for the Sydney fish markets. It's an old Fairfax facility that was available at a point in time. And the Sydney fish markets have been dealing with retail around the edges, a car park which is effectively used for forklifts, for materials handling, for coaches, for semi-trailers, for individual retailers that pop in, and also members of the public. Right. They've tried for the last 20 years to get themselves organised to want to be able to advance that project and advance the redevelopment on that site. They've now got themselves into a position where they're really keen to actually advance it. Right. And we're working very closely with them to talk about what would the possibilities be for a broader market offering? Because as David uh, mentioned, they are the third biggest market in the world. They have aspirations to double their traffic. Just over the hill here is the connection into Darling Harbour and uh, Chinatown. Right. Uh, they're actually on the journey of the promenade. So they're actually a stopping point on the journey. They're not an end point at any point in time. So they've got lots and lots of wonder, wonderful attributes and they're on the waterfront. So maybe in our thinking, what we could do is how could we broaden our thought process as to what we do? That's a batching plant there, a concrete batching plant that supplies about 20 to 25% of Sydney's concrete supply. This area here is a back of house operation for the Sydney boats. Uh, and um, uh, the cruise operators. So effectively what happens here is that the boats get loaded up, then they go to King Street Wharf, they collect their passengers, right, and then they come back, they're stored here, and they're actually fueled and, and loaded up there. So there a necessity for the harbour. Is a batching plant on the harbour a necessity? So what are the opportunities for us to be able to look at a fresh produce market district that covers that particular area. And then if you expand your thinking when you're actually walking along Bridge Street there, which is already a wall, so you don't really see from the park into the waterfront particularly well, how could I open up that water connectivity? And maybe if I thought even more laterally, what could I do with regard to roadways? Do I need to have the roadway there? Could I have more green space associated with what I'm actually talking about? Right? Lots of opportunities that can be explored through this process. Right. The private land holdings, we have those highlighted right, to be included within the study. What we're trying to do is also pick up all aspects of the Bayes area in our thinking and planning and organisation. And then this area here, well that's already allocated towards you know, the heritage group, uh, the dragon boats, etc. How do we make that more accessible and more user-friendly? Okay. From the point of view of uh, possible mix of uses, we've created this little table down the bottom here, and it's on each of the destinations that I'm going to talk to you about. And what it is, is our thoughts on the areas of focus within each of the areas. So it's one, two, or three dots. Okay. So in this particular area, right, it's a very big importance with regard to public realm. The reason for that is we've got the promenade that's going to go past it. The Sydney fish markets are a government-owned asset. So they're a public asset. So from the point of view of the public realm we create at that particular point in time, we want to make sure that right, the environment we create at the Sydney fish markets enhances the public realm. Right. We've also got our connectivity to the bottom end of um, Wentworth Park. Can we get a much stronger connection between the park and the water? Can we break down some of the barriers? Can we get the view lines better? With respect to employment, right, what we've got is the three dots again, primarily driven by the fresh produce market district. So our opportunity is to be able to expand that area 
right? Increase the size, deal with the car parking, the transport issues, and we're all aware that, you know, the 10 days a year that Sydney fish markets booms, how do you cope with those days so that we don't cause a, a massive problem for the whole community around here? So how through the creation of this do we come up with a better longer term transport plan for this area? And the middle one is housing. So no housing in areas like this because that's really the public domain that we're really focused on. Are there areas though within this neck of the woods that may be applicable to housing? Not as important as jobs and public realm, but still there may be opportunities for us to be able to deal with some of the housing in that particular location. Just a shot from the fish markets. All right, Peters. Look, I made this mistake earlier. Fresh produce. You know, uh, we met with the Prime Industries Minister the other day. If you think about, we're talking about fresh seafood, but he's also very interested about the ability to be able to sell all the fresh produce that New South Wales creates. And what a wonderful destination. 20% of the people that arrive at the Sydney fish markets come from overseas. Flowers. Right? Can be dining, exactly what we've actually got there. Right? So, but a better version of that. Right? White Bay Power Station, destination number three. Oop, just working my way through. Okay, so White Bay Power Station. I described it earlier today to the kids. Right, if you're looking at two pieces of low-hanging fruit within the whole Bays district, at the Bays area, one of them is the Sydney fish markets where there's general consensus we've got to do better than what we've got. The second one, which is really, really important, is White Bay Power Station. It's sat there for 30 years, right? Huge maintenance bills, it's degrading. How can we do something different to White Bay Power Station? The facility that we're in today was completed in 2000. All the refurbishment right, of this area was undertaken and completed in the year 2000. Since then, it's filled up with technology-based uh, businesses and has really formed a very important role for the local community out here as a tech incubator. So if you think about what the foresight people had in 2000 versus where we're sitting at the moment with White Bay Power Station, you could think about the wonderful opportunities that that facility actually creates for us to do exactly the same approach again and we have a very strong intensity of knowledge-based industries right, within the power station and surrounding the power station, but like ATP, providing the opportunity for a continued public interaction with the facilities and the areas. Okay? And if you then look at my possible mix of uses there, not mine, I should say, right, uh, but some possible uses, Okay, public realm, right, very important, three dots, why? Because we can um, make the power station more publicly accessible. There's a massive area in front of the power station which would form part of any future promenade, but it would also form a very big part of a public open space solution right, for the overall bays uh, precinct. Housing. There's areas beyond the curtilages where housing could be considered, where the uses may be compatible with the surrounding areas right, um, and of a scale similar to the surrounding areas. And employment, I've already talked about knowledge intensive uh, jobs. How can we actually get a few people in here, like the Channel 7 that we've actually got here, how do we get a few of those groups interested in this particular area and then we can blossom all around it? Right. Um, we talked to the kids this afternoon and one of the characteristics that I talked about in the future leaders 
and uh, the future opportunities for the kids was to imagine, to be creative. Right, so we have a blank cam, we have a canvas there which has a lot of character. So what we need to be really creative about is how can we reactivate that area? Just some shots. Right, there's the promenade. I don't think, well, I didn't fully appreciate the scale of what we actually had there. Right, when you stand back and you actually have a look at it, it's a long way from the waterfront right, down here back into White Bay Power Station. It's a wonderful opportunity for us to be able to look at doing something really clever there. White Bay, including the cruise terminal, which is short term, uh, sorry, um, yeah, one of the, uh, the immediate actions. So we've shown it there in large and in orange. The reason why we've done that is because whatever solution we come up with here may actually help right, ports with the resolution of the issues that they've actually got there. So there's some level of connectivity. How could we actually help deal with some of the environmental and operational issues through our thinking in this particular area? Right? And then there's a level of connectivity through there. That's the reason why we've identified it. It's a real opportunity for us to be able to work collaboratively right, with our um, partner agency to be able to help resolve the, any particular concerns in this area or identify concerns in that area. The reason why we talk about possible mix of uses is that, we, again, on each of the destinations, we have identified the dial up, dial down areas of focus. So public realm is very important in this particular area. Right? The connectivity right, uh, into the existing Balmain community. It is an overseas passenger terminal. Right? It's a long term opportunity. It's currently a deep water per, uh, port. Right? What we need to do is in our thinking here, to be able to help in here, make sure that we actually think, what does the longer term plan look like for housing and for employment? So you can see public realm is really the driver in that area. Roselle Bay and the Bay's waterway. Right? As David uh, mentioned, the reason why we've identified it as a medium term project is there's lots and lots of different leases there. And all those activities that are occurring there right, have a necessary role in Sydney Harbour. So our ability to, albeit all government land holding, our ability to march in there and come up with alternative solutions will only be aligned with right, the ability to find right, progressive solutions to either relocate or work in a compatible manner with the uses that are there at the moment. Hence the reason why we've identified it as a medium term project and not a short term project. It's the complexity of the leases right, that would drive that process. And as David mentioned, right, longer term projects, Roselle Rail Yards. Roselle Rail Yards are linked to uh, Sydney Light Rail Stabling up the end here. Right, as well as the West Connect project, both very much long-term projects. So we can assist to come up with some short-term thinking in the planning there, but in reality, right, it's a 10-year off project. Right? So what would be wonderful is spend a lot of time working our way through the things that are immediate, start to get some runs on the board, I demonstrate the value that you can bring to the Bayes area right? and then that'll better prepare us for this area and the next one which is an operating deep water port, Glebe Island. Okay. So that's really me uh, from my presentation. So I'll hand back to David to talk about the great ideas. <coughs> This document uh, should have been available to you on the way in, but if it's not, can you please make certain it's available to yourself on the way out. It's about um, a parallel, as I mentioned before, a parallel process that we're proposing. 
we're asking you to respond to the document, the uh, discussion document, uh, and what we've discussed tonight and the outcomes uh, following your contributions later. Uh, and we, uh, uh, sorry, we're asking for that to take place between now and the 30th of June. And the call for great ideas will be a parallel process that will actually be launched uh, next week formally. It will be a, a formal process which will have guidelines about which projects might qualify and how your, ide sorry, your ideas uh, would need to be directed and structured. Uh, and also there will be uh, a very formal, not a very formal, but a very transparent process for the receipt of those uh, ideas and the assessment of them. There will be a panel of independent experts who will receive the ideas and assess them. Every idea that we receive will be published on our website. Uh, and those ideas that we, that we think are truly great ideas will be recommended by the selection panel for further consideration and they will go into a formal, um, transparent and public process to determine which of them actually come to fruition. We very much encourage you to become part of that. We've had lots of ideas in the form of submissions to, uh, following the last summit and we're asking for people to come together or singularly give us their ideas on what they think could go on in these destinations and how it all might come to a wonderful outcome for the bays in general. You'll see this, uh, this is very, very well explained uh, both here and on the website and I really encourage you to uh, in, engage and to undertake it. It's, uh, this document was about the call, how to submit, how it will be assessed, what the publications will be uh, and details that relate to it. There will be a formal uh, launch of the program with full documentation which sets out the, um, the guidelines for um, submission and the uh, assessment criteria for the ideas and that's likely to be launched next Friday. So there are two parallel parts of this, what you've heard and seen and what you will read in relation to that plus as well as what you see when you go through the summit, uh, so with, with the summit uh, um, environments, but also this process which I recommend to you very strongly. I know there's a lot of people in this room that have great ideas uh, and some of them have been made uh, known to us and there are things uh, <laughs> that some of you have said before, particularly in relation to the summit last year, this process enables a legitimate uh, process for you to actually get that idea registered and dealt with. So I, I think a lot of people have sent us letters about what they think we should do. This is a, fo a formal government process that enables the registration of those ideas and the dealing with them. So please uh, accept that and, and uh, let's have your ideas. Thank you. Thanks, David. And, uh, and of course, in direct response to issues in the discussion paper, uh, the consultation process continues and uh, that closes on June 30. But uh, between now and then, there'll be a range of workshops and other community engagement activities uh, directly on the, um, on the discussion paper.